Okay, in this video we're going to look at a solution to problem number A1 from the 2019 Putnam. So the problem reads as follows. So let's suppose that A, B, and C are non-negative integers, and we want to find all values of this expression. So we have A cubed plus B cubed plus C cubed minus 3ABC. And we can rewrite that as follows. So we can set F of ABC equal to the expression, and then we really want to find the image of F. In order to look for a strategy to solve this, the first thing that I did was I made a big chart of values of this function of f, and I won't show you the whole chart, but I'll show you the parts enough to guess a good strategy for the solution before we go over the solution. Okay, so here's a portion of the chart that I made. So notice what we see is the outputs of f. We have all non-negative integers except multiples of 3. Notice we're missing 3 and 6 unless they are multiples of 9. Notice we have 9 and 18, and we're actually going to have everything between 9 and 18 except for 12 and 15, which I'll let you fill out the chart if you want to see that. And so now what I want to notice is some patterns here that we can relate B and C with A and further we can re relate this output with A as well. So let's make a new column for B and C and notice in this first case, um, well there's nothing really to do because we have zero, this is kind of its own case. So here we have 1, well that's equal to 3a plus 1, and in this setup we have b is equal to a, and we have c is equal to a plus 1. Now notice here we have 2, and that's equal to 3a plus 2, and here we have b and c are both a plus 1. Here we have 4, which is equal to 3a plus 1 for this value of a, and again, A is B and C is A plus 1. Now for 5, we have this is 3A plus 2, and each B and C are both A plus 1. So it looks like if we have a non-negative integer that's of the form 3A plus 1, we can input A, A plus 1, and A. But if we have a non-negative integer that's of the form 3a plus 2, we can input a, a plus 1, a plus 1. And that follows for these first four numbers. And it's actually going to follow for these as well. So this is of the form 3a plus 1, and here we have a and a plus 1. This is 3a plus 2, and this is a plus 1 and a plus 1. And now finally, something different is going on if you have a multiple of 9, and what we'll see here is that this is of the form uh, 9a plus 9, because a is 0, and here we have b is equal to a plus 1, and c is equal to a plus 2. And that pattern follows down here. So 9a plus 9, uh, that's 18 in this case, and here we have a plus 1 and a plus 2. Good. So uh, the pattern is kind of emerging here. If you're not a multiple of 3, then you can use this trick with a, a, a plus 1, or a, a plus 1, a plus 1 plugged into f. If you are a multiple of 3, well, either you are not achievable, or you happen to be a multiple of 9, in which case you'll use a, a plus 1, a plus 2. Okay, I'm going to clean up the board and then let's look at this carefully. Okay, so using the experimentation on the last board, I've cleaned up a statement that will solve this problem. So the statement that I have here is that the image of f equals this set s, which is all non-negative integers except those that are congruent to 3 or 6 mod 9. In other words, it's all non-negative integers except those, are those that are multiples of 3 unless they are multiples of 9. Okay, so we're going to prove this by double set inclusion, and we're going to start off by showing that s is a subset of the image of f. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. And so maybe case 0 here is noticing that 0 is an element of s, and so we need to show that 0 is in the image of f, but that's pretty obvious because f of 0, 0, 0 equals 0, which tells you that that's in the image of f. 
So now let's let n be an element from s and maybe n not equal to zero because we've cleared that up in the first case. And this gives us three more cases. So let's look. Case number one is n is of the form 3a plus 1. So if you're not a multiple of 3, then you can be 3a plus 1 or you can be 3a plus 2, which is the second case. So case 2, 3a plus 2. And like we said, uh, elements of S are not multiples of 3 unless they're multiples of 9. And so that, that'll be case 3. So N equals 9A plus 9. And so here we're taking all multiples of 9 that are bigger than 0, because 0 is obviously a multiple of 9. So that's what we have for our cases. Okay, so we can use our observation on the last uh, page, and I'll skip the details of the calculation, but it's quite easy, just like some uh, high school algebra. And you'll notice that in this case, f of a comma a comma a plus one is going to be three a plus one. And that's just from plugging all of those into this expression and simplifying, but that's equal to n. So that means in this case, n is in the image of f. And then we can see here that we can do f of a, a plus 1, a plus 1. And again, after some pretty simple simplification, we'll get that this is 3a plus 2, which is equal to n, which means n is in the image of f. And then finally, here we can do f of a, a plus 1, and a plus 2. And that's going to give us 9a plus 9, which is equal to n, which tells us that n is in the image of f. And so we've taken all possible things that are inside S and shown that they're in the image of f. So in other words, we have shown the set inclusion in this direction. Okay, so now I'll clean up the board and we'll show the set inclusion in the other direction. Okay, so now we're gonna show the set inclusion the other way. In other words, the image of F is a subset of S. So we have two things to show here. First, we need to show that the image of F is always positive, or non-negative, I should say, because S is made up of non-negative integers. And then next, we need to show that if, the if something from the image is a multiple of three, then it's also a multiple of nine. And that'll clear up all restrictions on the definition of F. So let's look at the non-negativity uh, first. So let's take f of a, b, c. Let's write the definition. So that's a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed minus 3a, b, c. And you can actually factor this. This factors like a plus b plus c and then a squared plus b squared plus c squared minus a b minus a c minus b c. So that's kind of a nice symmetric way to factor this thing. But we can go further, we can see that this is a plus b plus c, and now we can rewrite this as we can take a half out of this whole thing. So let's take a half out of this whole second term and then rearrange these things a little bit. So we'll write a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So let's put orange parentheses around that. So notice if I factor a half out, um, my coefficient of negative AB becomes 2. My coefficient of A squared becomes 2 as well, but I'm only using one of them here. And now I'm going to have plus um, A squared minus 2AC uh, plus C squared. So again, now I have two a squareds there, and then that minus two ac. And then finally, I have b squared minus two bc plus c squared. And now if you look at this second big term, everything in here happens uh, twice. So we have negative 2 ABs, negative 2 ACs, negative 2 BCs, and then we have 2 A squareds, 2 B squareds, and 2 C squareds, but then this half cancels it down to what we had in the last step. But what this allows us to do is to factor each of those orange parts. 
So now we have A plus B plus C, and then each of these orange parts, parts factors as follows. So A minus B squared plus A minus C squared plus B minus C squared. But we've got A plus B plus C, but since A, B, and C are non-negative, that tells us that this is bigger than or equal to zero. But now we're squaring numbers and adding them, which tells us that this is bigger than or equal to zero, which means this whole thing is bigger than or equal to zero. So that means everything in the image of F is bigger than or equal to zero. Now we just have to show that if it's a multiple of three, it's also a multiple of nine. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll do that. Okay, so we're going to finish up our proof that the image of F is a subset of S, which will finish the solution to this problem. And we're going to do that by using the following factorization of F. So this is similar to the one that we used when we showed that the image of F was always non-negative, but it uh, really builds upon that. So this is going to be equal to A plus B plus C. So that's the similarity with the before. But now we're going to continue to factor the right-hand portion of this, and we'll do the following. So A plus B plus C squared minus 3 times the quantity AB plus AC plus BC. Okay, good. So it's just fairly elementary algebra to multiply all of that out and see that you get this thing over here, which is what we want. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is show that if f is a multiple of 3, then it has to be a multiple of 9, which rules out the possibility that you could have something 3 or 6 mod 9 as an output of f. So let's suppose that 3 divides f of a, b, c. So that means f of a, b, c is a multiple of 3, and what we want to show is that it is a multiple of 9. In other words, that 9 divides f of a, b, c. Okay, so given this factorization right here, we can actually say that this implies that 3 divides a, b, sorry, a plus b plus c, or 3 divides the rest of this stuff. So let's write that down. So a plus b plus c squared minus 3ab plus ac plus bc. Okay, good. So now let's uh, break these into two cases. So let's call this case 1 and this case 2. So let's say case 1 Let's suppose that 3 divides a plus b plus c. So we know at least one of these has to be true. So if 3 divides a plus b plus c, that tells you that 3 divides a plus b plus c squared. So that's obvious. But that means that 3 also divides a plus b plus c squared minus 3 times a, b plus c. AC plus BC. I mean, obviously, we're taking something that which, we, which we've decided is a multiple of 3 and subtracting another multiple of 3. But now what we have is 3 divides A plus B plus C, and it divides this big term. So in other words, it divides both portions of this product. But if both portions of this product are multiples of 3, that means the product is a multiple of 9. So what we've ended up with is 9 divides f of a, b, c. Good. Now the second case is very, very similar. So let's look at that, case 2. And that would be 3 divides a plus b plus c squared. And actually, we can stop there because if 3 divides a plus b plus c squared minus this multiple of 3, then we can just add a multiple of 3 and we see that immediately 3 divides a plus b plus c squared. Okay, so we can simplify really easily like that. But now what this tells us is that since 3 is prime, if a prime divides a perfect square, then a prime has to divide the number that is being squared. So here we have 3 has to divide a plus b plus c. But now we have the same thing again. 3 started out dividing this big thing, 
immediately we could get 3 divides a plus b plus c squared. That leads to 3 divides a plus b plus c, but that tells you that both portions of this product are multiples of 3. In other words, the entire product is a multiple of 9. So what we've shown is that if the output of f is a multiple of 3, then it has to be a multiple of 9, which tells us that it's impossible for the output of f to be um, congruent to 3 or 6 mod 9. In other words, the image of f is a subset of s. Okay, so that's the end of our solution.